<laughs> Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to talk about all the wonderful things that are happening today, not including the weather. So I have plenty of uh, other stuff like dub and stuff. I got some new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT, a couple MCAT-related news items. Um, I do have a, your Friday tease for your city council and more, so stay with me as we gear up into the middle of the week, May 30th, Wednesday. This year, 2018. Uh, currently, it is 50 degrees outside. Let's just get right into it. Your high is going to be 69 with a 80 to about 30% chances of showers. So there's going to be some thunderstorms. There's going to be a flood warning happening until Friday at noon. So we're going to see a bunch of showers happening throughout this week. And then by Friday and hopefully Saturday, we won't see another flood warning and maybe see some clear skies happening this weekend as well. But I'll have that and more later on as we get into it on Friday. Uh, let's talk about some things that are happening locally. Uh, I don't know if you have, uh, guys have read uh, the Kaiman at the University of Montana. The Kaiman is a um, newspaper that is published out of the University of Montana's uh, journalism program. And th what they did is they released a story about the UM Foundation, U UM Foundation, whose job is to invest and get money where it can, where it basically can. Um, offshore accounts tend to be more popular for tax benefits as long as to not having to pay them. Um, the main story follows the Infinite F Foundation investing tens of millions of dollars in tax havens, which include more than 100 other universities and the other university association foundations in the Paradise Papers leak, showing that offshore investing is far from an isolated incident at UM. While the offshore investing with the UM Foundation appears to be completely legal, the practices of offshore investing has been criticized by the public and scrutinized by the federal government. Um, Jane Gravel, a senior specialist in economic policy um, for the Congressional Research Services at the Library of Congresses, says that the only reason anyone would invest through offshore companies is to hide their money from tax collectors or public scrutiny. Uh, but of course, a story uh, from this uh, has evolved, and you can find out more information by going to the Um Of course, last year, 2016, Reinvest Montana was a student-run organization where they wanted to support, um, have the University of Montana divest from um, fossil fuel, um, involve fossil fuel companies, and the UM Foundation's job is to kind of raise money, collect money, invest in companies, that kind of thing. There, it's kind of like. Uh, the UM part of the business, which is not usually associated with the university directly, but it does work with the university. So, of course, the UM Foundation has also been able to get the Board of Regents, which has a 20-day delay period for people who wish to see documentations for the f from the foundation. So, if you are um, curious about what the UM Foundation is doing, um, they're allowed to uh, basically um, delay you for 20 days which they could also use to make a protective order on those documents that you're looking for. So that's kind of what's in the news. You can look at that story and more at the Montana Kaiman. Um, this story was ongoing and they published it just this week. And I think May 25th was when they got the last bits of information. So you learn from more, MontanaKaiman.com. Um, in the state news, Billings is also dealing with flood warnings, but of course the flood warnings went to minor flood warning this week, and it's uh, expected to not grow from any more this week, uh, but there's still rain happening all over this week, and on Monday, uh, shows uh, rivers rising only about four more inches during the next 48 hours. The crest is now expected to to reach 13.6 uh, feet, just above the 13.5 feet thre threshold for a minor flood stage. Localized flooding and bank erosion remain causes for concern in areas near the river, but Yellowstone County Disaster and Emergency Services Coordinator Brad Shoemaker said earlier, fears of major widespread flooding have largely passed. In national news, White House says that it will impose a 25% tariff on the fif $50 billion of Chinese goods and industrially significant technology. The full list of uh, products affected will be announced by June 5th, 15th, and the tariffs will be implemented shortly thereafter, according to the administration. But of course, what does that mean? So basically, anything coming to the U.S. will be taxed more and more, and China has threatened to uh, pull uh, certain exports as a result. But of course, more recently, the two countries have seemed to s uh, signal an appetite for de-escalation. Uh, China cut tariffs on U.S. automobiles, and Trump has pledged to support ZTE, a Chinese company affected negatively, negatively by U.S. sanctions. Though I have said uh, that the U.S. will continue to pr uh, pursue litigation at the World Trade Organization over 
allegations that China steals U.S. intellectual property. China, meanwhile, has filed its two, uh, its own um, World uh, Trade Organization dispute against the U.S. over Trump's er earlier tariff proposals. So that's kind of what's happening in the news. Here's a bunch of new programs that are going to be airing, which include um, Joel's trip to um, Missoula Urban Demonstration Project and a couple of lecture series, including Writing at Work. Um, I believe that's going to be part three or part four. So um, here's those. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about some of the city council stuff that you guys can expect for today. Hi, everyone. I'm here with Ellie Costello. She's the executive director of MUD, which stands for Missoula Urban Demonstration Project. Ellie, thanks for being on the show today. Oh, I'm so pleased you guys came down to join us. Yeah, my first time, right? Um, at this location, do you want to tell people a little bit about the history of MUD? and um, some of the things that you offer the community. Sure, so this is MUD's 37th year. Congratulations. Yeah, I think about that a little bit. And um, we started originally as um, a community living space that was really focused on how can we teach people to live sustainably and they did that through having a couple of dwellings on the north side yeah. when we started out here in montana we have a total of 368 miles of of protected rivers under the wild and scenic river designation and all of those were designated over 40 years ago so basically that was a big inspiration for our organization, among others here based in Montana nationally, to form a coalition to kickstart more river protection here in Montana because it's been a few decades and we feel like now is the time, <laughs> if there ever was one, to seek out additional rivers protected under, under the same designation. So we formed a coalition called Montanans for Healthy Rivers and if you haven't already checked out our website to learn more about our efforts, you should. And you can also list your name as a supporter for more river protection here in Montana under that designation. As far as uh, your granddaughter specifically, I think you all need to look at your kids and your grandkids. Um, and you need to, f the, these traffickers, they're true predators, they will go after uh, the low-hanging fruit. They are going to go after the kid that uh, is being bullied at school, that has low self-esteem, that when an adult um, talks to them, they can't look the adult in the eyes. Uh, if that's a description of your, your child or your grandchild, you need to work on that with them and, and give them that self-esteem so that when a trafficker approaches them in the mall, and we've seen it, we've got videos of it in Billings, traffickers that we've taken down approaching females uh, and making a pitch to them. Uh, you can see in one particular video that I'm thinking of, this uh, female uh, looks at them in the eyes. She gets as quickly to her car as she can. Uh, and then departs the area, and it's not worth their time to go after her. But if it is the kid that's looking down at the ground that blushes when the pimp says, um, you know, you're really pretty um, and uh, can't make eye contact, those are the kids that they're going to go after, the kids that are struggling already. Um, they can smell vulner vulnerability miles away. So desperation made me think for the first time that Publishing would probably involve a business model that would hire people to do different things. Never had occurred to me or any of my literary friends at William. And it was a good time to be moving to New York, which I hated really, having visited there once. Um, because that was, you know, this is 77, which the 60s had maybe ended a year or two before. So p young people weren't moving to New York to work for some massive, great corporate publishing company that somehow, <clears throat> or paranoid thinking, must have been profiteering from the war in Vietnam and all other bad things in capitalism. Um, so I, I got lucky. I came into it at the right time. And I liked editing, which I'd done my whole college career. Um, and I like, I like the 
being around like-minded people for whom books of one sort or the other was the main reason to be alive. Hey guys, um, last couple city council meetings, there have been a bunch of public comments towards the city of Missoula not being uh, forthcoming when it comes to the litigation against uh, the Carlisle Group and the whole Mountain Water um, legal team that they're working with. But today, starting now, um, the city of Missoula, through Committee of the Whole, includes a uh, the uh, water utility litigation update for those of you who still believe that the city is not being forthcoming with you starting about now. So you guys can check that out. It's not the community of the whole, but if you case you miss the meeting, you can always go to ci.missoula.mt.us and I'll show you that after I get through a couple other meetings. Parks and Conservation starts at 9.30 this morning as well. The PROST, which is a uh, plan when completed, uh, uh, will update the 2004 Master Parks and Recreation Plan. Think of it as a uh, um, our Missoula, but instead of urban growth, this is park growth. Um, and the plan for the greater Missoula area and the 2006 uh, open space uh, plan updates. The plan update is a partnership with Missoula County Parks, Trails, and Open Lands. This plan needs to be updated to ensure provisions of facilities and services desired by the public and are reflective of growth and current financial, social, and economic needs. Uh, basically, Missoula's uh, park growth policy. Um, admin st uh, finance starts at 11.15, um, and it's the last meeting of the day. They're keeping it fairly short. Usually the last, uh, the last uh, meetings of the month are usually kind of kept pretty tight, and they don't, there's not much going on there. But, of course, the city is wrapping up its space needs assessments, which is clearly outlining the needs for more space. Uh, while master planning uh, commences to solve those space problems, this space will provide much needed short-term relief. Additionally, the leaf lease has language for the right of first refusal in the event of this building becomes part of a long-term strategy of solving the space problem. So this is a whole about, uh, uh, this whole meeting is going to be about space problems and it's going to happen at Admin and Finance starting at 11.15. Land Nation Planning, they're talking about someone who wants to talk about bu a building request and plans uh, uh, and this is usually um, land use and planning. They talk about building requests and plans, and this is definitely one of them, including like a, um, I think it's like a sidewalk improvement type of area and whatnot. So it's not much going on in that meeting, but there's a couple other things that are happening as well today for your committee of the committee meetings, and I'll have your information on that on Friday. If if I, uh, if I learn anything from it, basically, I'll t tell you what I learned. Um, but of course, that's pretty much it for that. I do want to talk about, um, before I jump into uh, the Dubbin Stuff um, video of the week, I want to talk about uh, some information about MCAT. Our Animation Camp 2 is full, but Animation Camp 1 is still open, and that happens from uh, June 25th through the 29th, I believe. So it's the last full week in June, and we're offering a camp from noon to 5 p.m., and this is a, uh animation camp, so kids can learn uh, Source Filmmaker. They can use uh, Stop Motion Studio Pro. They can use other forms like... Uh, sprite animation so the whole idea is that a lot of times uh, this is very taxing work but it, kids who like to be in front of the computer all the time can actually use that time in front of the computer for something useful and you can find out more information by going to mcat.org and of course I'm just telling you guys about animation camp we also provide a time travelers camp which is the very first camp that we're going to be trying this. This is more of kind of like a an experimental idea camp. I think of this as like the Ken Burns documentary type style reenactment type film camp. There's a lot to this um, that um, the uh, Historic Museum of Fort Missoula is co-sponsoring this camp with us. So we'll be going to Historic Museum at Fort Missoula to learn about history and potentially uh, reteach people about history. And this is a good introduction into uh, video and media arts in general. But of course, our biggest one yet is happening the, the last full week in July, and that is our zombie camp. If you have a kid out there who likes zombies and wants to be part of a zombie movie, uh, there's still plenty of room in the zombie camp, and you can sign up online at MCAT.org. If you want to learn more information about my morning show and more clips and interviews, you go to 
wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write it out twice. You can click on videos to see past videos and more of current episodes, past episodes, flagship Fridays, dub and stuff, interviews, our vlog, and of course the uh, Van Buren Interchange Project. I, I've kept this on my website as well if you want to learn more about what they're doing at Van Buren and uh, what they're going to uh, the It's the Van Buren Interchange. They're going to basically put... Um, two roundabouts in that area so and also there's gonna be a lot of traffic uh jams and there a lot of projects are going to divert a lot of um traffic throughout missoula so i'll get more on that in a little bit later but without further ado here is the latest greatest uh dub and stuff featuring at war with the army from the 1950s movie so without further ado here's that <laughs> there's no sign on this door Hey you, I need 10,000 pencils by the end of today. Uh, excuse me, I forgot what I was uh, doing here. <laughs> you stupid weirdo. Uh, that was not really that nice. Have you ever thought of joining the army? Uh, well, I have, but not during a time of war. <laughs> Take it easy. Do you realize that 100% of people like me die from death? Yeah, uh, yeah, I know it all about it. Relax, youngster. You're not gonna die. Well, it's my life, and I'm gonna live it the way I wanna and live it. And how do you suppose you're gonna do that? Huh? What are you gonna do with your life? I'm gonna sell real estate. Real estate? Maybe you are dumb enough to join the army. Ooh, burn! Who said that? Oh, sorry about that. I was just uh, cooking on my Bunsen burner. Uh -huh, I really don't mind. I'm kind of a joke. Very good. Well, you know what? I always thought that I could sign up for the army and do really well, but... Mm. Well, did you get my 10,000 pencils? I got a thousand girls who wanted to send Dear John letters. No. Well, you should get right on it already. Excuse me, higher ranking of officer. I'm Charlie, and I'm trying to get out of the military. I'm sealed and delivered. Now get out of my face. Slam. Hey, guess what? Some kid tried to get out of the army. <laughs> What's that? You want me to uh, resign? Well, I'm not resigning. I'm a good officer. I call shenanigans. Shouldn't you be getting those 10,000 pencils? Fine. Whatever. Huh? Huh? Hmm. Now you listen here. I'm not going to the front lines. Uh, Ow! Last time, darn it. You're not getting out of the military. Well, sir, uh, have you ever seen the front lines before? It's scary. Scary? I can't believe you used that word. Oh, well, I'm just trying to prove how much of a coward. I know that you're a coward, but you have to serve your country. Can I just, like, you know, get the 10,000 pencils like that guy over there to the uh, Dear John letters, you know? Simple tasks, you know, around the office? Huh, so you're scared, yeah, huh? I'm really scared, and I... Yeah, you, over there. You think you're all tough with those stripes? Maybe you should get into real estate. Oh, call back, isn't it? Oh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to be the best real estate ever, and I'm not going to sell you a house. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. It's time for Missoula Events. Missoula Events, uh, ooh, gotta find it. Okay, starting Wednesday, this morning, Ms. Uh, Mismo and Roots Acro Sports Center, and along with Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, provide indoor activities for all your kids and needs starting as early as 9 a.m. Um, hey, if you have a kid who wants to learn to tumble, uh, fall safely, then this is the place to do it at those places. These are fun indoor sports arena type deals, and why not? It's raining outside. It's going to be a great place. Uh, Tiny Tales at Empower Place. If you want your kids to be a little safer and learn some reading and learn some cool new things, they're going to be doing some uh, uh, Tiny Tales at Empower Place, which is at the Missoula Food Bank just off of Montana and Wyoming. I, no, it's Wyoming Street. All right, so Spectrum is talking about neurons starting at 11 a.m. this morning. They're doing some neurons, but later in this afternoon in their makerspace, they're doing some boat building. Um, Scrabble and Bridge at Missoula Senior Center. So if you're interested in playing some board games uh, and you want to support the Missoula Senior Center, you can play some Scrabble and Bridge. And for only about two twenty-five, two fifty, you can uh, support your Missoula Senior Center. Middle School Writers Group, and also just want to say Middle School um, 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 Missoula Senior Center also has a thrift shop in their basement if you want to provide any clothes to them as well just 
just letting you guys know. Middle School Writers is happening at Missoula Public Library for uh, groups grades 6th to ninth grade, and it's every Wednesday from 5.30 to, uh, from 3.30 to 5, so just after school. It's in the boardroom, and it's for writers and grades who want to get some good feedback, play with words, and eat a little chocolate. Um, later that night, Women's Comedy Workshop and Happy Hour for women and non-binary folk, a uh, place to talk about comedy and stand-up. Come to the Badlander on the last Wednesday of the month for an hour to talk uh, with women about women comedy. Um, we don't care if you've been comedy scene for years or just want to learn more about it. It's humor, jokes, and making people laugh. That's what it's all about. And starting at 6 p.m. at the Badlander, this event is free. And it happens right before the Revival Stand-Up Comedy Mic Night at the Badlander, which starts at 7.30. Which reminds me, you can go to the Badlander for this free event for a night of improv stand-up comedy, also known as improv comedy, ugh, and uh, comedy without a safety net. And then stick around for karaoke, which happens at 9. And here are some of your late-night events that are happening that uh, – that night as well, you got Brains on Broadway Trivia, which happened at Broadway Barton Grill. You got Rockin' Karaoke at the Dark Horse, and you got more and more stuff happening that night as well. Okay, so that's pretty much it for your Wednesday night events. I got an art clip for you guys, and this will be playing all through the July, and I believe it's going to be the Missouri Art Museum. So when I come back, I'll talk about your Thursday events, so stay with me. I'm almost done. Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for me to talk about all your events that are happening for Thursday. Uh, and uh, hey, it's Thursday, uh, May 31st happening. Um, if you guys want to kick off, there is a dog show through the Five Valley Kennel Club, and it's happening from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Missoula Fairgrounds. This annual Five Valley uh, dog show returns for extended four days of show. Spectators are welcomed and no charge. Confirmation, obedience, and rally shows all take place in various sites on the grounds. For more information, you can contact their website at fivevalleykennelclub.com. If you are interested in doing some family fun time at the Y, the YMCA hosts a family fun time um, starting at 9 a.m. for anybody who wants to do some fun indoor fun, because Thursday, you have the 80% chance of rain happening pretty much all day tomorrow, and it's a good way to, um, you know, check out some of the indoor activities that the YMCA provides with the basketball court, a track, um, gaming, rock wall i believe and they also have a pool and that's just the things i know about uh tiny tales is going to be at the miserable public library not in power place so it's going to be at the miserable public library starting at 10 30 a.m and i can't say enough about how important it is to get your kids engaged in reading and learning and um you know when the younger they are the more they absorb things like a sponge so be careful they will rule the world someday. Let her drop at senator dane's office because you can't see him face to face here in missoula everyone is welcome Free, the Montana uh, conservation voters are headed to the offices of Senator C. Danes on Front Street to drop off letters they have gathered and to show him that we are not giving up on communication. Uh, bring a letter or join us to show the community your face with a letter. 
Um, Meditation for Veterans Learning Center at Red Willow uh, provides many classes and opportunities. And one of the things they do is that they do a lot of um, uh, activities for veterans. Um, f- and this one's happening tomorrow at 1 to 145. And this is meditation. It is a good way, guided, guided mindfulness practice exploring the method of paying attention to the breath, increased calm, and reduced stress. No previous experience necessary. And of course, Lego Club happens at the Missoula Public Library every Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Uh, yeah, hang out plays it with some Legos. Beginning Animal Communication Conference call, and this is going to be online, so if you want to learn more information, go to MissoulaEvents.net, and this is a educational and fun conference call to learn how fulfilling it is to connect with animals. Um, So without further ado, here are some of your late night events that are happening Thursday night is... uh, I guess the Montana Film Festival presents The Endless, which is a film going to be playing at the Roxy. Bon Iver is going to be at the Kettle House Amphitheater, so the Kettle House Amphitheater is kicking some things off up there. Missoula Open Deck Society DJ Jams Party is happening at Old Beck VFW Post 209. Uh, beginning, a- of course, um, and of course, karaoke at the Dark Horse. And of course, there's probably a whole bunch of other things happening, but it seems like uh, if you want more information about your things and um, the goings-ons in the Missoula's, go to MissoulaEvents.net for more information. Hey, what's going on in Missoula? MissoulaEvents.net. Look at, look at it. Look it up. Look at it. Here you go. But of course, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. What I have for you guys today. Um, I just want to give a shout out to Missoula Agent Services. They tried to come on this morning, and I uh, had some technical difficulties, so I won't be able to bring you that interview today. Uh, but I want to remind you and everyone out there that they are looking for volunteers for the Meals on Wheels services. They are looking for uh, relief substitute drivers, so they're looking for people who volunteer who just want to get out there and deliver meals to people who are homebound and to get a good connection with our com- our aging population and to promote the dignity and independence of um, aging individuals. I know I totally butchered the mission statement, but you can learn more information by going to Missoula Events. No, by going to MissoulaAgingServices.org. Okay, guys. Thanks for joining me this morning. Sign up for summer camps. Uh, MissCon was last weekend. We got a lot of footage of that. Maybe I'll show you a little taste of um, MissCon this Friday when we get back into it. Um, But I I just want to say... Thanks for joining me, and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week of rain and thunderstorms and all that stuff. So, goodbye, guys. (laughs) 